I'll uh, have to call you back. This week on Click Exciting Times, we've decided to find out just how good the video cameras are on smartphones by using one to make a movie. And you can't get more analogue than a night at the theatre, or can you? We're at the show where it's not just the actors doing the projecting. Plus the latest tech news and a great way to bring your desktop to life in Webscape. Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly and welcome to Alexandra Palace in London. This was the birthplace of BBC One, the world's first regular high definition TV service. And when I say high definition, I'm talking high definition 1930s style. Of course, these days you can get higher definition video on one of these than this place ever pumped out. In fact, as we've reported quite recently, some filmmakers are now using smartphones to make professional looking films. But we wondered just how good a movie can you make on a smartphone? Well, to find out, we've decided to make one. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm at Alexandra Palace now. We had a tweet saying there was something weird over here. I'm looking around, but I can't see anything at the moment. But, um, um, I'll, uh, I'll have to call you back. Droid on droid. <laughs> Rogue android. Thought there'd be an app for that. The end. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to have a go at making something as good as that, possibly a little bit better. You will need some extra bits of kit and a few apps if you'd like to turn one of these into something nearly as good as one of these. Give us a wave, Mike. The bar has already been set high by this movie, Olive, which was entirely filmed on a Nokia N8 smartphone. That said, director Human Khalili used a host of professional-grade film lenses, a professional sound engineer to capture audio separately, and a professional edit suite to boot. Thanks. For us, however, the challenge was to capture high-definition video and sound, colour grade the resulting footage, and to generate those rather cool visual effects using only smartphones and their various attachments. So, 
which phone to use. Well, although Samsung's Galaxy S2 seemed to shoot the best video, most of the hardware attachments and most of the best post-production apps are currently only made for the iPhone. So we plumped for the 4S. There's an explosion at the bottom. Where Location booked. Storyboard completed. Well, scribbled. Zero. And batteries charged. We headed to Alexandra Palace for a day of fresh air and running about. OK. Now, one of the first problems you'll encounter when shooting smartphone video is the fact that the phone tries to be too helpful. It constantly changes the exposure and the focus as you're filming. Not something that will win you any Oscars. Q Filmic Pro, one of a few apps which allow you to lock the camera settings for the duration of a shot. The next problem you'll have is the lens, which will be locked to give you a decent wide-angle shot and nothing else. There are, however, a number of lens attachments which attempt to give you a variety of looks. A super wide-angle lens captures even more of the scene. And we used this fisheye lens to get the weird warped effect that was the Android's point of view. And a telephoto lens can really give any shot a much more professional look. As well as giving you close-up shots, it also throws the background out of focus, something which, well, just looks cool. This little attachment will let you screw your phone onto any tripod you like. Oh, and that nice tracking shot at the start of the movie, where the camera slides smoothly past the foreground interest, you'll be needing something like this. <gasps> and a steady hand. I think it needs to be whatever he feels more comfortable doing. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So get out of it, Kelly. Uh if you need to capture the action at a run or a walk, a steady cam attachment will counteract your camera operator's natural bounce. As well as the steady running shots, we also used it to simulate the Android's steady glide. It's a similar setup to its professional big brother, with a counterweight underneath to keep the phone level as you twist and turn. Ow! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> now, it's certainly fiddly to set up. You have to get the balance just right before you start, but the results are smooth. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready for action. <laughs> now, as well as getting good looking pictures, it's also important not to forget the sound. In phone mics up. are notoriously bad at capturing good quality audio. Now, if we'd wanted to record a lot of dialogue, we would have needed this £350 tie line attachment to connect to our professional mics. But because we only needed the occasional spoken line, we opted for this more affordable iRig. The Kung Fu moves are cool, but optional. But they did help Dan to achieve a steady shot whilst holding the microphone. Alexandra Palace now, we had a tweet. The sound quality was certainly passable, as long as it's held as close to the mouth as possible while staying out of shot, which did mean that we forced our director to lie in the most awkward of positions. Target acquired. Even the voice of the Android was done in phone using a free voice changer app. And so to those not unimpressive visual effects shots. Both were created using Action Movie, a free app from the US production house Bad Robot. Just place the target where you want the action, record a few seconds of video, and then decide at which point you want the effect to begin. Cool, dear, oh dear. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna like take doing, a while. It's like doing the post-production on site. It's a little hit and miss, and you do have to create the final effect shot in the phone before you can have another go, okay. but for a free app, the results are pretty cool. I put a bit of wobbling on that. Normally, I'm a bit more steady. It's all impressive stuff, but there are some serious technical drawbacks to shooting high-definition video. Most pressing is the fact that it will seriously drain your phone's precious resources, especially when you're using an app which makes it work even harder than normal. Filmic Pro chewed through the iPhone's battery like a worm through an apple. High-quality video also fills your phone's memory to bursting. Three minutes of video shot with Filmic Pro takes around one gigabyte of space, double the amount 
of the iPhone's standard video app, and meaning that after 40 minutes of filming, our brand new 16 gig phone was out of space. And of course, because Apple doesn't let you get at either the iPhone's memory or its battery, well, not without a hammer, we found ourselves regularly dumping off footage to a laptop and recharging it with this cheeky charging case. Once you've recorded your raw footage, you may want to give it more of a cinematic feel. There are many video filter apps which will process your pictures. We used one for the overall colour grading and then used a combination of two different apps on top of that fisheye lens to create the finished effect that was the Android's point of view. Now, don't forget that despite what Steve Jobs may have told you in the past, this is a phone not a supercomputer. It takes about 20 minutes to apply an effect to one minute of video. So keep your phone charging and go get yourself a cup of tea. And then another one. And go for a nice walk. Once your shots are shot, your actors are spent, darling, and your effects have been applied, it's time to edit it all together. And even here, it is possible to do it on a mobile device, although on a small screen, this is really painful. So if you prefer to use a PC, YouTube allows you to perform simple edits and music mixes, and both Mac and Windows come with video editing software too. Yeah, I'm at Alexandra so, now. turns out it is possible to make a respectable looking creation, shots, special effects and all, using just a smartphone. The results certainly seem to be good enough for the web and for standard definition TV, although a larger screen would certainly expose the sub-cinema standard video. And as soon as you try to do anything vaguely complicated, you'll need a ton of patience and the sheer stubbornness to refuse to spend a relatively small amount on a proper video camera. Now, of course, there's a good chance that some of you may have made your own smartphone movies. We'd love to see them, so why not send us a link? We might show some of the best on the programme in a few weeks' time. Our email address is click at bbc.co.uk and on Twitter we are at BBC Click. Right, next up, tech news. What many see as rip-off data charges for using your phone abroad is to end in Europe. For the first time, the European Parliament has voted to cap data charges for European users when travelling within the EU to 59 pence per megabyte. Under the changes, which come into effect in July, the maximum cost of making and receiving calls and texts will also fall by around 20%. Next year, data caps will fall further and customers will be given the option of signing up with a different operator while retaining their own number while travelling in the EU. Two American senators are asking for an investigation to be held into whether employers asking for Facebook passwords during job interviews are violating federal law. Facebook says it's seen an alarming increase in reports of employers trying to gain access to current and prospective employees' Facebook profiles in recent months. Internet users should have an easy-to-use Do Not Track Me feature at their fingertips. The recommendation by the Federal Trade Commission in the US would prevent online companies from recording users' behaviour without their permission. The agency said companies had to be more transparent, but senators may be too busy with other business to consider legislation before the US election. So, we've looked at how some of the latest consumer tech can be used to make half decent movies. Now it's time to give another of the creative arts a bit of a makeover. LJ Rich has been behind the scenes of high-tech theatre. No one pushes scenery on and off this stage. It's a South London theatre which has been kitted out virtually and it's being run by computers. Computers that create props, that can hide the stage or create a character's worst enemy. So here you can see the virtual set mapped back onto the real set. If you look at the bright white lights, mm -hmm. um, these are the series of projectors which are, uh, which are hitting the walls. We're using the projectors in, in conjunction with all the rest of the lighting rig. So the idea is that it all blends together as a seamless whole. The seamless hole is actually five QuickTime video files playing in sync. Each screen overlaps its neighbours slightly, called edge blending in the trade. 
It allows the actors to interact with, or be upstaged by, the scenery. One of the highlights of the show is where Pippin the hero fights samurai. And the thing is, is it's a virtual samurai. They're going to let me have a go at it. The principles are the same as traditional shadow theatre, and it helps if you know the routine in advance, which I didn't. Behind the screens at the production company's studio, our mystery swordsman is actually a person in a motion capture suit. But before anything's projected, they build a scale model of the stage to get a feel for the space. This is made into a virtual model using CAD. The guides are based on this. Now, the creative design process starts in earnest. We're looking at Maya, 3D animation software. What we've done is brought the virtual 3D model that we were looking at a moment ago into Maya. And we're using virtual three-dimensional objects in a virtual space. And then, if you look on the monitor over this side, rendering the results that are being created by the computer and then that is then used and reprojected back onto the scenery. Despite the high-tech feel of projected scenery, it's still down to good old-fashioned trial and error to get the virtual and the real to match up. Even future projects like this need tweaking before it's suitable for the theatre. Our model is standing in front of smart glass, which goes opaque when a current runs through it. The theory is to create quick scene changes behind the screen while someone is acting in front of it but the actor in front is currently covered by the projection. Assuming this can be ironed out with, say, projection from behind, it will still cost upwards of £30,000 to fit this to an average-sized stage. Tim also showed me another of his pet projects, real-time photo manipulation, made especially for an upcoming play about photography. The tech's not that new, but it's certainly a novel idea to use a MIDI music controller to change how pixelated the image is. And what prototype room would be complete without a hacked Kinect? The Xbox controller, which follows our movements, is controlling a virtual keyboard. But this demo is more about illustrating how to configure the depth sensor. It means actors can effectively direct themselves, triggering scenery changes or music cues just by walking through a specific area, which might mean a longer wait in the wings for everyone else. LJ Rich. Now, a change is as good as a rest, that's what they say. And it's true, I go on holiday, I get a change of scenery and I come back feeling refreshed. But then I sit down at my desk and I'm staring at the same old wallpaper. It's easy to change, I know, but to be honest, I just can't be bothered. Fortunately, Kate Russell is not that slack. Here comes Webscape. Oh, yeah. According to Tolstoy, true life is lived when tiny changes occur. So bring your desktop to life at coover.com. The free desktop app can be downloaded for PC or Mac and delivers an ever-changing landscape of desktop wallpapers designed by some of the world's best artists and illustrators. Like most people, I too rarely get round to changing my wallpaper, so this app has really brightened up my desktop. It's like someone sneaking in in the middle of the night and hanging a piece of art on the wall. Lovely. If you don't like surprises, you can register and browse the archive of stunning wallpapers online, building a playlist of favourites to stream to your desktop automatically. There's a Twitter app too, and the company say they are full steam ahead, developing for the rest of the smartphone market. The video you can record on an iPhone is pretty decent quality these days, especially with all the apps and extras you can get to enhance the picture, as we've already seen in today's show. But what exactly are you supposed to do with all those random snippets of video if you have no time? Make them beautiful, of course, with this excellent free app, Magisto. Once connected, you can shoot video or upload from your camera roll pick a soundtrack, and then sit and wait for the magic to happen. You don't actually have to sit there watching the screen. Took me a few minutes to work that out first time, as there's pretty much nothing you can do. Processing will take a few minutes, so go and have a cup of tea. This works a lot like FlixTime and Animoto, a couple of browser-based services that do this that we've seen over the years. 
Having it parceled up as an app with built-in links to your networks makes sharing iPhone video several layers thinner than other ways. My one annoyance is that you can't remix a collection. It comes out the same every time. Even so, this app is a welcome addition when it comes to video sharing. Time to geek out Mariner style now with this app built by the makers of Plane Finder, shipfinder.co. It tracks and displays shipping data in Google Maps. Navigation is a little rudimentary and zooming can be jerky due to the sheer volume of data being loaded. There's detailed information about where each ship is going and what its business is. You could in effect track the delivery of a shiny new car you've ordered from overseas, or perhaps follow the progress of a cruise ship your grandparents are holidaying on. You could even sit there and watch the ship move across the map frame by frame if you have a lot of patience. Not quite like being there in person though, is it? Luckily the site lets you fast forward through history, so you can see the ships go sailing by. This is the captain of your ship. Or jump aboard yourself with the Sail Me button, which opens the ship's route in Google Earth for you to explore some more. Now I want to turn things upside down. Yes, it hurts my brain too. FirstPersonTetris.com is a new twist on an old classic that is pretty hard to get your head around. Fun trying though. And finally, finger painting really paid off for the creators of chart-topping Draw Something, a game on Android and iPhone that pits you against other players in a Pictionary-like draw-off. Draw me a picture, draw it in colour, cos I want to see. This might not be a Salvador Dali, but the price tag for the game is in line with the Great Masters, as it was revealed this week that Farmville maker Zynga are prepared to pay $180 million for it. And that was Kate Russell. If you missed any of those links, they're all up at our website, bbc.co.uk slash click. From the site, you can also contact us either by email or by Twitter. Those addresses, if you'd like to do it directly, click at bbc.co.uk and on Twitter at BBC Click. That's it from the Mothership, though. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you next time.